Hello everybody, welcome to part two of the Unity XR tutorial series. Uh, I'm going to start up a new project uh, real quick, just to show you how to set up OpenXR, just in case you want to target different platforms other than Oculus Quest. Uh, if you don't care about that, there'll be a timestamp on screen and in the description, and you can use the chapters to work out where we're going. Uh, so to start off, if you're going to use OpenXR, you just make a usual 3D like normal. So I'm just going to call this Unity XR tutorial, click create. Okay, once Unity is open, you're just going to head up to Window, Package Manager, head up to Unity Registry, scroll all the way down and install XR Plugin Management. And once you've got that, you're going to want to uh, come up to Advanced Project Settings, Enable Preview Packages, I understand, closes out of that, XR Interaction Toolkit, and install this too. Once that's done installing, you'll get this little pop-up, you just want to click Yes. This will... Uh, Restart your Unity, you also want to click I made a backup, go ahead. Once Unity has reopened, you will want to head back up to the package manager actually. Wait for it to fetch packages. Scroll all the way down. And under XR Interaction Toolkit, you'll see these samples. You want to head into the default input actions. Click Import. You want to head up to Edit, Project Settings, XR Plugin Management, and check Open XR. Now with this you'll see this little triangle, you just click there and click edit. Now here you want to add a few interaction profiles, these are like the controllers that the players will be able to use, so HTC Vive, Valve Index, Oculus Touch, are usually the ones I go for. Uh, Multi-pass and single pass, so single pass will render one big image and try and put that on the screen, multi-pass will render two of the same image to put on each eye, if that makes any sense, I'm not too... Uh, well versed in that. If you're making it for PC VR, you'll probably want to stick with multi-pass. I think with Quest, you go single pass. Uh, again, with Quest, you'll just want to click the Oculus Touch Controller Profile and Oculus Quest Support. And make sure that in here, you've selected OpenXR. When you do that, you'll get this little arrow too. You want to click Fix. You can close out of that. Now, one thing that I've noticed is if you head to Player, Other Settings, uh, it tries using the Vulkan Graphics API. If you're, using, if you're uh, developing for Quest, you just want to simply remove it from the list. Uh, one other thing is, uh, if you're developing for Quest, you want to select uh, Android 8.1 Oreo. Uh, your scripting backend, if you set that to IL2CPP, And you to stop, make sure you don't get any errors, make sure you set input, sys, input handling to both. Apply that and your Unity will restart. Now that we are back in Unity, uh, you will want to head down to your samples, XR Interaction Toolkit and go all the way down here. And you just want to click add to all of these. Just like so. Then head back up to your project settings, head up to preset manager. And for these left and right controllers, make sure you set the XRI default right controller to right and this one to left. And now we should be good to go. So add an XR, XR origin action based. Make sure that your left controller has all of its left things and it has all of its right things. Uh, to set up like we had it last time in the last episode, uh, you want to delete the Ray Interact to things uh, and add an XR default interact or XR direct interactor sorry uh, add a sphere collider set to is trigger with a radius of 0.25 go to XR and add a locomotion system action based you can delete both of these if you want and add a continuous move provider action base and a continuous turn provider action based now overall, all this changes is how the input is handled, as you can see using these references. Uh, but the way I'm going to teach you to handle input will, today will work for both uh, the uh, original input system and the new input system, so you don't have to worry. Last thing we need to do before we head in is add a character controller and a character controller driver to the locomotion system. Add a radius of 1, a height of 2, uh, sorry, a radius of 0.15, a center of 1, and a height of 2. Now, uh, I'm going to set my scene up just like the original video. So, 
one last thing I forgot actually, uh, make sure you add cube set to 0.1 on all axis to both hands, make sure that the transform is reset to 0, 0. I'm just going to clean up the hierarchy slightly. Okay, so now if we load into our headset and click play, ah, bit of digging around, I found out that I forgot to add this. So add it, go to your XR Interaction Manager and Input Action Manager and add one element and set up the XRI default input actions. If we now load up our game, here we go. We have our hands, we can go and grab stuff. Perfect. I'm realizing that uh, I'm able to turn left and right using my left hand, as you can see. Uh, I'm not touching my right right now. So I'm going to quickly go and fix that. That will just be uh, in the locomotion system. Uh, you want to disable left hand turn action and right hand move action if that's. You want to move with your left hand and turn with your right hand, and vice versa if you want to do the opposite. Uh, one last thing we need to double check is uh, making sure we are gravity application mode immediately. And the XR origin is being tracked to the correct place. So when I go down, not the character controller, not the XR origin, up, down, up, right, all that. Uh, you can move around, you can grab stuff. Perfect. Uh, if you want a bit more information on how all of that works, uh, you can watch my last video. Uh, also, if you did that, as I did, you need to reset gravity application mode. Uh, anyway, now on to the point of this video, which is handling input in the uh, XR Interaction Toolkit. So, I don't have uh, a hand model that I can give you. Uh, which is how I'm going to kind of demonstrate this. We're going to demonstrate uh, how this works by using kind of like uh, animations. That's the one. So uh, we're going to open up the animation tab if you just sort of add tab animation. Uh, we'll call this hand. I know it's not, but it can be. <laughs> uh, and click on either one of those and click create. Now this animation can be whatever you want. Maybe make a new folder, animations, uh, and we'll call this shrink, uh, and we'll have another one for, let's just call it normal. So in normal, we will go to the transform and add the scale, which will stay the same throughout the entire thing, delete the last keyframe, uh, and on shrink, we're going to again go to transform scale uh, and the shrunken version will just be tiny. Let's just uh, go record, make sure you're recording and go all the way down. Now when you play it should be staying there and if you go to normal and play it will be normal size. I know it's kind of hard to see uh, but I promise that stuff's happening. <laughs> Uh, you also want to add an animator with the hand thing there. Uh, hand should just be inside the animations. This is uh, an animation controller. If we open this up, you'll see the two two animations here. Uh, I'm expecting like semi, like at least some kind of Unity knowledge. If not, you can follow along. Uh, you might just not understand everything. And we will add. Uh, a float here. This will be our parameter. We'll use that. We'll set this in code to change uh, the value of the shrink and normal. Uh, we'll call this. Um, we'll just call this value. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, though. I've done this slightly wrong. We're gonna go back and create a new blend tree. We'll call this shrink bro. Uh, here we're gonna set this to two 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 D freeform Cartesian. Uh, both parameters will be value. So actually a no, 1D will do. Uh, motion, we'll add two motion fields. Um, we'll have normal and we'll have shrink. 
Now, what this is saying is when the value, which is this parameter up here, make sure you've set that here. If it's set to blend, send it to, set it to value. When the value is at zero, uh, it will be normal size. When it's at one, it will shrink. We'll set this in code in a minute using the XR interaction toolkit. So we are going to make a new script called XR hand animator. Open that up in Visual Studio or your code editor of choice. I'm just going to do all of this for a second uh, and we're going to have it stop and add some using tags. So we're going to be using unityengine.xr, using unityengine.xr.interaction, and using unityengine.xr.interaction.toolkit. I don't think we use all of these, but I want to have them just in case. We're going to make a public input device characteristics controller characteristics. Uh, this will be how we get whether it's a left or right controller. And we'll set that in the inspector. We'll also have a private input device current device. Now, this input device is just a reference to the controller itself. We can use this to add haptic feedback uh, to get input as we're going to do, etc. Now, in start, we're going to call try get controller. This doesn't exist yet, so we're going to create the method. Uh, to do that, I just press o Alt, Enter, and it brings up that little menu. I'm not sure whether that works in all IDs, but I think it works in most. Uh, here, we're going to get a new list of input devices. Make sure you don't put devices. That caught me off a few times. We call it devices, and is equal to a new list of input devices. And then we're going to do input devices dot get devices with characteristics and we can pass through our controller characteristics and the devices list. Now this will find uh, whatever controller or device we set here and put them into this list. Uh, we're going to do if devices.count is more than zero. So if it finds more than one device or well, if it finds more than zero devices uh, with these characteristics we set in the inspector, then we're going to set current device equal to the first device that it finds. Remember to put it as zero because uh, lists are zero indexed. Next, in our update function, we're going to want to go and do a check. Make sure that we have the controller. So not if current device is valid. Try get controller. Return. Now, what this is saying is if we don't have a current device, try and get it. Uh, and return so we don't do any of the rest of the code. And then we do handle animator here. This will just be another uh, method. And we're going to need a private reference to the animator. I'm going to call it anim. Uh, and in start, probably before we try get controller, actually, we're going to do anim is equal to get component animator. And this will just get the animator on our current object. So in here, we're going to do an if statement. Now this if statement is how we're going to handle our input. Uh, which pretty, eh, we'll leave it as handle animator. You might want to change the method name to handle input or something. Uh, so to actually get input, there's this line line of code you're going to use a lot. Uh, it's this if statement here. I'm going to do if current device but try get feature value now this is trying to get a value inside of this so you can use it to get the velocity how far the grip's being pressed um how far the trigger's being pressed whether you're pressing a button etc uh to get those values we're going to use common usages dot and then whatever you want so for example we're going to use the grip uh and we're going to need an out value here so we're going to do out float grip value <laughs> Now, what this will do is it will pass out a float of how far the grip is being pressed. So uh, if it's not being pressed at all, it will be zero. If it's being pressed all the way down, it will be one. We can use this on our anim to set the float of value, which if you remember, we set in the animator controller earlier. And we're going to pass the grip value as the amount. Uh, to visualize this slightly better, I'm also going to print the grip value so you can see what's going on. If we head back to Unity now, 
make sure you put the XR hand animator on the other script too. Don't load up your game just yet. I've just remembered on the hand, uh, we need to. For some reason, the input device characteristics aren't showing up for me. So if this is happening for you, just do serialize field and that will make it pop up in the editor. So for the right hand controller, you want to set it to right. Left hand controller, set it to left. And now if we load up the game. You will see that if we press our grip, based on how much we're pressing, it will shrink and grow. So, say you go and grab this object, your controller will shrink really small. And if you look in the inspector, right now it's zero, if I start pressing it down, you will slowly watch it increase until it's one. Same with the other side, back to zero. Now, you probably won't want that debug going constantly, so we're just going to delete the print. And I'm going to show you how to utilize uh, balls. So, for example, try doing this yourself first. So, try get feature value, and we're going to try and get the primary button. See what you can do. Uh, for anyone who is not going to bother doing that because it's a YouTube video, uh, we're going to use common usages dot primary button. And this will pass out a ball of, for example, primary button value. And we're just going to print this. We're going to do print primary button value. I seem to have an extra bracket there. Make sure you don't have that. OK, put your headset back on. And while you're in the game, you'll be able to see that our grip is still working. You can still get that value. Uh, but if you press the, if you look at the bottom again, if you press the primary button, it will be true. So while pressing it, it's true. And while you're not pressing it, it's false. Pretty simple. But uh, you can use this to create, for example, uh, like the video you're seeing on screen. I created animations for those hands using this. I'm going to open up that script to show you how simple and how close to the original it is. So here we have my other XR hand animator, and as you can see, the script is basically the same. We just have a few different try get feature values. Um, this one gets a trigger value or grip value. These these things are set in the animator. Uh, you can set that up yourself by going and watching a few videos on how to use the Unity animator if you haven't already. I hope that this was helpful. If you need any help, please leave a comment. I will be responding to comments as quickly as I can again. And if you have any insp anything in specific you want to learn, uh, post a comment and let me know. I will try and get it, an episode ready for that. Uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.